sometimes it's what gets us through the day. It has everything we want. It has sweetness, it has salty, it has fat, it has high calories. Sometimes it has us reaching for the antacids. There's really good fast food, and then there's really bad fast food. Love it or hate it, we can't live without it. We need fast food. We need a way to fuel our bodies so that we can go. But what makes a truly great fast food? The three basic elements of fast food are it's ready when you want it, you can eat it with your hands, and it's not too messy. The question you have to ask yourself is, if you need to move, can this food move with you? But fast food is more than just a burger at the drive-thru. It has transformed our lives and changed the course of history. So order up. We're counting down the 101 fast foods that changed the world. Let's dig in with number 101. The Jelly Bean. Jelly beans give you this opportunity to have so many different fruits in your mouth. It's the only time in my life I can remember having 10 different fruit flavors all at the same time. The French have been making tiny gelatin treats for centuries, but it was good old American ingenuity that brought us the jelly bean in the mid-1800s. We discovered how to make a kind of a harder shell around it so that it could last longer and could be made on more of a mass level. At the turn of the 20th century, jelly beans became the first bulk candy to hit the market. And thanks to their egg shape, they quickly became an Easter favorite. Today, we consume about 16 billion over the Easter holiday, enough to circle the globe three times. But it was President Ronald Reagan who made jelly beans a popular year-round treat. He was very health conscious, and when the, uh, the dangers of tobacco became more well-known, he decided he had stopped smoking his pipe, and he found these little jelly bellies as a substitute. President Reagan always kept a jar on hand and passed them around at important cabinet meetings. He even believed they provided a window into the personalities of the politicos around him. He felt it was uh, just an insight into people's personalities when he watched them uh, and, and their consumption of jelly bellies. He would say from time to time that you can learn a lot about a person's character by the way they pick the jelly beans. So how did the jelly bean land at number 101? To create the list, we assembled a blue ribbon panel of 14 of today's top food experts. People like Mitchell Davis of the prestigious James Beard Foundation, award-winning food journalists Mark Garrison and Dan Pashman, Andrew F. Smith, author of 22 food histories, and top chef Spike Mendelson. The mission of this prestigious 14-member panel? Assemble a list of the 101 greatest fast foods of all time. I mean, there are 100 foods on that list that kind of really define exactly what America is and its culture. Once our panel made their picks and ranked them, the results were tabulated to create the definitive list of 101 fast foods that changed the world. We're counting down the list, and it's kind of torture because I'm sitting here in a studio talking about all these delicious foods that I can't eat. I am starving. Well, in that case, let's get back to the countdown with number 100. This marshmallow, graham cracker, and chocolate snack kept Tennessee coal miners on the job. The Moon Pie. Inventor Earl Mitchell Sr. invented the Moon Pie in 1917 as a portable snack that could be taken into the mines. Paired with the cola, the Moon Pie soon became a cheap lunch that helped America's workforce make it through the Depression. Number 99 is known as the Fruit of Kings. Pineapple rings. In 1661, traders petitioned the King of England not to raise taxes on sugar imports. To help seal the deal, they included an exotic gift with their request. A pineapple. The tactic worked, spurring Britain's rise as a maritime trading power in the Caribbean. Legend has it this meal of raw meat was invented by Genghis Khan and his army. Number 98 is Steak Tartare. Steak Tartare allowed the Mongol or Tartar army to travel great distances. The way the Tartars made um, their meat was food on the go because they would use horse flesh, they would put it under the saddle, they would travel for a day, uh, that would tenderize it. Genghis Khan swept across Asia, establishing the largest empire in human history, covering 16% of the Earth's total land area. If the doctor prescribes food number 97, we promise he's not just selling you fluff. The marshmallow. Since ancient times, 
The marshmallow plant was used to treat everything from skin irritation to infections. It was also discovered that the root of the plant could be processed into a sweet confection. Unfortunately, today's marshmallows are made from 100% sugar. So the only thing they'll help you cure is your sweet tooth. On to number 96. Without this fast food, American music may never have gotten into the groove. It's chitlins. Chitlins are cooked pig intestines and were a food of last resort for starving slaves. It was one of those foods that was discarded by the master class of the elites. So the term that we, we talk about eating high on the hog, this is an example we eat low on the hog, out of necessity. With a texture like calamari and a smell that can assault the senses, chitlins are not for everyone. People that love them, love the taste. People can't stand them, they can't stand the smell. <laughs> Chitlin's popularity as a soul food was cemented in the 20th century, and they became the namesake of a scene that changed popular music forever. There were a whole circuit of venues from the Deep South all the way to places like New York that were known as part of the Chitlin circuit. These black-owned clubs gave many musical legends their start in the segregated South. You could walk in and find Ray Charles performing, you could find Little Richard, you could find even Jimi Hendrix. And after the show, artists could hunker down for a meal, giving guys like James Brown the soul power needed to get to the next game. Fast food number 95 changed the great outdoors forever. It's the s'more. This trifecta of gooey goodness was invented on a Girl Scout expedition in 1927. Now it's the first camping food for millions of kids. That adds up to a lot of people asking for some more. Before it was a cute pet, number 94 was a South American fast food. The guinea pig. This fluffy rodent has been a source of protein for the people of the Andes for thousands of years. It's hard for Americans to imagine eating something that was your, like, fourth grade class pet. The guinea pig? Really a guinea pig? During the 16th century, enslaved Incans ate jerky from guinea pigs as they extracted enough gold and silver to power the Spanish economy for almost a century. Number 93 is a summertime treat that helped kick off the fresh produce industry. Strawberries and cream. In 1867, demand for this dessert prompted the first attempt to transport fruit by refrigerated rail car. The successful experiment made it possible to ship fresh produce across America, bringing seasonal fruits and veggies to our dinner plate year-round. At number 92, our fast food's blue ribbon panel chose the sticky, sweet, fun food of carnival goers everywhere, cotton candy. Invented in Nashville, Tennessee in 1897, the cotton candy machine gave us the power to transform plain sugar into silky strands of sweetness. Cotton candy, it's so weird because it's basically just sugar and air. It's kind of amazing that they get it to do that. So how does the cotton candy machine work? Sugar is poured into a heating element, melted, and spun at high speed. Centrifugal force pushes the liquid syrup through tiny holes, creating strands of sugar glass only a millionth of a meter wide. In 2009, a researcher at Cornell University noticed these tiny filaments of sugar resembled the structure of the human capillary system. It has opened the door to huge advancements in the development of artificial human organs. Number 91 is a New England classic that's giving the hot dog a run for its money. The lobster roll. Lobster was considered a low-class food until 1910, when business tycoon John D. Rockefeller mistakenly ate and loved a bowl of his servant's lobster stew while summering in Maine. Today, this crustacean has come full circle. Lower demand and record catches have made wholesale lobster cheap enough to fuel a new fast food phenomenon. Number 90 gave mainstream America its first true candy on the go. The Tootsie Roll. Invented in 1896 by New York City candy shop owner Leo Hirschfeld, this rugged little candy actually saved American lives at the Battle of Chosen Reservoir during the Korean War. The temperature was 20 degrees below zero most of the time. Uh, food was not easy to come by simply because they were surrounded. With the Chinese army closing in, the embattled Marines radioed for more Tootsie Rolls, a code word for ammunition. Unfortunately, 
The novice radio operator on the other end didn't know the lingo. Folks back at Supply here, Tootsie Rolls, and they assume that the call is for Tootsie Rolls, and they assemble thousands. A few hours later, canisters of candy began to fall from the sky. But the mistake proved to be a lifesaver. They were loaded with sugar, and sugar gave them the energy. Now that helped them in that fight back to the sea. Of course, if those guys in Korea had just waited long enough, the Tootsie Rolls would have become hard enough to be used as ammo. We're counting down the 101 fast foods that changed the world. We put together a panel of 14 of the country's top food fanatics to consider what makes a truly great fast food. I think the things on this list really reflect um, a sort of world cultural view about what is good to eat on the go. You may have one hand that's, you know, having your drink, one hand with the sandwich. Maybe you're trying to text while doing all that at the same time. The fast food needs to be fast enough to keep up with everything you're trying to do in your day. So hunker down and get ready for another helping of the 101 fast foods that changed the world. Number 89. It's been called nature's most perfect food for both its nutritional value and its packaging. The egg. We've been gathering and boiling eggs since the dawn of time. Once man finally domesticated the chicken about 5,000 years ago, we had a reliable source of protein with a protective case that we could carry anywhere. Our blue ribbon panel voted number 88 the go-to fast food for the calorie conscious. It's the rice cake. At only 50 calories each, it takes about 20 rice cakes to equal a bacon double cheeseburger, making them the lowest calorie food on this list. With just 0.4 grams of fat per cake, they fill us up without adding pounds, giving generations of dieters a fighting chance to reduce their waistline. Coming in at number 87 is a southern favorite, the Hush Puppy. This deep-fried ball of cornmeal most certainly originated in the American South and helped escaping slaves make it to freedom. As they moved along the Underground Railroad, slaves fed them to tracking dogs and pleaded with them to hush, puppy. Number 86 was one of our most important culinary inventions. Condensed milk. In the mid-19th century, fresh milk was transported in unsanitary wooden barrels that often caused illness. But in 1854, Gail Borden changed all that when he developed a condensed milk in a can. By boiling out water content and sealing the thickened milk in a bacteria-free container, we now had a portable version of milk that helped save lives. Confucius once said, he who finishes Chinese food is rewarded with number 85. The fortune cookie. Introduced at the turn of the 20th century, the fortune cookie has become a kitschy American icon. Kids and adults alike love to crack into that thing. It's a tasty cookie and you can win the lotto. It's the only thing I can think of, except maybe a birthday cake where the food is telling you something. But where do all the fortunes come from? The answer you seek is at Wonton Foods in New York City. When I was uh, writing fortunes, the ideas came from uh, everywhere, from TV shows to uh, my kids uh, to uh, uh, people in the street. Donald Lau penned over 2,000 of the messages now found in Wonton's fortune cookies. Bring something up from the back burner. Don't be afraid of fear. In March 2005, 110 Powerball ticket holders all struck pay dirt with numbers traced back to one of Lau's fortunes. I was sitting in my office that morning and uh, we started getting phone calls from the network. That's how I found out that uh, someone won the uh, lotto. Every year, about 3 billion fortune cookies are made in the U.S. That's enough Chinese wisdom and lottery numbers to fill about 44 super tankers. The chances of another payout like that are astronomical. But don't let that dissuade you from playing Lao's numbers again. Deep faith eliminates fear. Number 84 is one of the few fast foods that is made in almost every culture in the world. It's rice pudding. It's no wonder. Rice is the most widely eaten food on the planet. 
Today, almost 700 billion tons are harvested across the globe each year. So the next time you grab a rice pudding, chances are better than any other food on this list that there's someone else on the planet digging into. These crispy bits of fried pork skin and fat were first made in 19th century working class England. Number 83 is the pork rind. In modern times, their fat content and light weight has made them an essential high calorie snack for polar explorers, giving them the energy needed to keep going in sub-zero temperatures. They were a favorite snack of David Hempelman Adams, who became the first person ever to reach both poles and climb the highest peaks in all seven continents. Number 82 became a smash hit when America went on the wagon. It's applesauce. In the mid-19th century, hard apple cider was the most popular alcoholic beverage in the country. But when Prohibition hit in 1920, cider makers turned to applesauce as a way to make ends meet. Today, applesauce is the most popular canned fruit on the market. Number 81 is the fast food that keeps on giving. Turkey leftovers. Every Thanksgiving, Americans buy almost 700 million pounds of turkey. It has transformed a one-day holiday into the week-long ritual of food reinvention we have today. Turkey is one of those things that has a lot of lives. The fun begins day three or four after Thanksgiving. To fuel our love of leftovers, poultry farms are breeding bigger and bigger birds, with the average turkey now weighing in at a whopping 28 pounds. It seems the rest of the world may have a jump on us by eating food number 80. The Grasshopper. They're cheap, they're everywhere, and you never know when you might end up in an 80s POW movie like Chuck Norris, and that's the only thing that's on the menu. While insects aren't a mainstream food in America, chefs like Joe Rafa of OYML in Washington, D.C. are changing that perception. Serving tacos piled high with sautéed grasshoppers. Nutritionally, grasshoppers are a wonderful food. They are high in protein, low in fat, so they will keep you going for a long time. Eating bugs not your bag? Well, that puts you in the minority. Four out of every five people on the planet have eaten bugs by choice. Yet only about 20% of the world eats beef as a source of protein. Grasshoppers and insects have allowed the world to evolve. They've been a protein source for civilizations all over the globe. Ancient Romans and Greeks ate insects, and the Aztecs of central Mexico depended on bugs for protein. Without them, would people have prospered like they have? Probably not. It's allowed us to become what we are today. Still not convinced? Consider this. In the next 40 years, we will need to increase food production by 70% to meet global demand. And pound for pound, grasshoppers contain three times as much protein as beef. So maybe it's time to hop to it and get hip to the grasshopper. Number 79 is a cold salad that rules the hot summer season. It's potato salad. German immigrants brought a warm version of potato salad to America in the early 1800s, meant to be eaten hot. By the late 19th century, recipes began to emerge for a potato salad made from cold leftover spuds. With the arrival of mayonnaise on store shelves in 1907, the transformation of potato salad into a refreshing American summer classic was complete. When Mother Nature throws the works at you, it might be wise to stock up on food number 78. Pop-Tarts. When Kellogg's unveiled their radical new toaster pastry in 1964, it gave us the power to grab breakfast and go. But how has it changed the world? Ask the people who rode out Hurricane Irene in August 2011. As the monster storm bore down on the East Coast, sales of Pop-Tarts increased sevenfold at some stores, putting them up there with the battery and the flashlight as top-selling emergency supplies. We're counting down 101 fast foods that change the world. From the tastiest snacks Mother Nature has to offer to mouth-watering morsels of modern engineering that have transformed the way we eat. Fast food number 77 helps get us over the hump, even when that hump is Mount Everest. The energy bar. From the pro athlete to the multitasking mom, we spend about $1.5 billion a year on these compact meals on the go. With the technology we have today, you can press any food into a bar. But that doesn't mean we should press any food into a bar.
Unless, of course, you are someone like climbing guide and explorer Ryan Waters. I've used power bars on everything I've done from climbing 8,000 meter peaks such as Mount Everest to skiing across Antarctica. The typical energy bar contains a blend of glucose and fructose to deliver energy to muscles, sodium to replace lost electrolytes, and plenty of carbs. It's a combination that kept Ryan going at crucial times during two trips to the top of the world. On these extremely high mountains, you're out for as much as 20 hours in a day. There's been times when I've literally just made it back to the high camp because I've had an energy bar in my pocket. It's history repeating itself. During his expedition across Antarctica, Sir Ernest Shackleton relied on an energy-packed glucose bar called the Kendall Mint Cake. In 1953, the mint cake powered Sir Edmund Hillary and his Sherpa, Tenzing Norgay, the first humans ever to reach the top of Everest. Energy bars have changed history by getting us to places we've never been before and by helping us make it back to tell the story. Fast food number 76 was invented in 1891 and became one of the first mass-produced foods in the world. It's the Big Newton. More than 10 years before Henry Ford started cranking out Model T's, James Henry Mitchell invented a machine to stretch and fill pastry dough with fig paste. The first mass production bakery was located outside of Newton, Massachusetts, hence the Fig Newton. Served up hot at number 75 is the hash brown. This dicey potato dish was taken to a new level in 1956 by the Orida Company when they compressed hash browns into bite-sized pieces. School cafeterias would never be the same. Today, Americans eat more than 70 million pounds of hash browns each year in the form of tater tots. Number 74 is all the rage these days. The cupcake. To me, the cupcake is sort of the slice of cake for the me generation. It's like, this is mine, I can see the whole thing. It's not a piece of something larger, it's about me. The cupcake changed the world by putting baking into the hands of even the most illiterate of homemakers. Originally called number cakes, the recipe was easy to remember. One cup of butter, two cups of sugar, three cups of flour, four eggs, and voila. Let them eat tiny cakes. Paprika is the devil in the details of fast food number 73, the deviled egg. While the egg has been around forever, the sprinkle of paprika on top signifies a turning point for mankind. Spiced food meant humans weren't just eating to survive. We were preparing complex dishes and eating for pleasure, a cornerstone of modern civilization. Fast food number 72 always comes with a cherry on top. The Ice Cream Sundae. You love ice cream because it's awesome. I mean, it's just really, really good. It's one of the best foods in the history of the world. Tell anyone raiding the freezer for a scoop of ice cream topped with syrup that the Sunday didn't change the world, and you might get decked. Statistically, 25% of all Sundays are made with scoops of vanilla. Unless, of course, you are building the world's largest one. This monster weighed in at 55,000 pounds and contained a whopping 70 million calories. That's enough ice cream for every man, woman, and child in New York City to grab a spoon and take a bite. The Sunday was born in Wisconsin in 1881 as an act of rebellion against so-called blue laws. One law prohibited the consumption of ice cream soda on Sundays. So a clever soda jerk took out the seltzer, added syrup in a cherry, and skirted the law. Americans, it seems, couldn't imagine even one day without their ice cream. Number 71 was the original San Francisco treat, the shrimp cocktail. Sometime around 1860, a San Francisco gold miner dipped oysters into ketchup and the savory seafood combination was born. After some experimentation, we settled on shrimp, added spice to the ketchup, and created a classic. Today, the huge demand for cheap shrimp is quite literally changing the world. About 60% of Thailand's mangrove forests have been cleared just to farm shrimp. Fighting its way to number 70 from the city of brotherly love is the Philly cheesesteak. It's so great. Eat it and it's delicious. The cheese.
cheese is all melty, the beef is greasy, it's a kind of a mess. You taste the city when you have a Philly cheesesteak. With a gut-busting 1,200 calories and 40 grams of fat, the cheesesteak has made its mark on the hearts and waistlines of Philly forever. Number 69 proves bigger doesn't always mean better. Baby carrots. You know, you could just take a big carrot and cut it up. As a way to bring food to people who want something fast and good for them, why not? Since the invention of these pocket-sized snack packs, American consumption of carrots has risen 33%. Now you can buy a wide variety of sliced fruit and veggies, cut, washed, and packaged to go. But none of it would have happened without the baby carrot. Number 68 is our first entree from south of the border. The taco. You can see into it. The taco, it announces what it's delivering to you, which is pretty cool. Until the 1960s, most Americans had never tried Mexican food. Then in 1962, the first Taco Bell repackaged this street food to appeal to the average American, changing the fast food world forever. What Glenn Bell does is create what uh, is a hamburger in a tortilla. This has nothing to do with a taco that is popular in Mexico. Now, Americans consume more than 2 billion fast food tacos each year, and the door has been opened for authentic Mexican food to thrive in America. At the popular Kogi taco truck in L.A., Chef Poppy Choi pays homage to the classic, then adds his Korean barbecue for a truly 21st century mashup. It's just delicious, it's easy to eat, and it's, it's, it comes from a strong culture, even though sometimes we in America don't know exactly why. Tacos have transformed the world by breaking down cultural barriers, one bite at a time. With a lot of, you know, foods that we call ethnic, they're really not ethnic in the United States anymore. It's all integrated into this beautiful country of ours. What culture will help fill the next generation of tacos? No, no one knows. But rest assured, it will be running down your hand as you take that first sloppy bite. Number 67 is a steaming bowl of early American history. Clam chowder. You're in New England, you're in Boston, you pretty much have to order it at least once. I mean, clam chowder, and probably if we're being correct, we would say clam chowder. In the 15th and 16th centuries, chowder helped fuel transatlantic explorers, and the kettles it was prepared in were amongst the earliest items to be traded to Native Americans, creating a bond of trust between the old world and the new. This is the 101 fast foods that changed the world. The definitive list of fast and portable foods that have transformed the way we eat forever. Let's take a look at the numbers. Our love of fast food has exploded in recent years. Americans spent $6 billion on fast food in 1970. By 2010, that number had skyrocketed to $165 billion a year. Now, 44% of Americans eat fast food at least once a week, with Alabama spending the most, about 60% of their weekly food budget. And now, back to the countdown. Our troops stormed the beaches, took Iwo Jima, and introduced the world to number 66. It's Spam. Made with processed pork shoulder meat, Hormel Foods introduced Spam in 1937. And the timing couldn't have been better. Four years later, when America entered World War II, soldiers shipped out with 100 million tons of Spam. And they shared it with islanders in the South Pacific. It changed the diet of locals forever. To this day, people in Hawaii, Guam, and the Philippines are crazy for Spam. Number 65 is one of the sweetest guys on the planet, the gingerbread man. The first cookie cutter ever made was a gingerbread man, but it's not just his iconic figure that has changed the world. The gingerbread may be one of the most influential foods in the history of mankind because it was the desire for those spices that go into gingerbread that launched Europeans on the voyages of discovery. The spice trade paved the way for Europe to colonize and plunder the riches of the East. Maybe gingerbread men aren't so sweet after all. Number 64 is boldly going where no food has gone before. It's space food. Ever since John Glenn tucked into a mid-orbit snack of applesauce in 1962, 
we've been trying to keep astronauts from going hungry in the heavens. So I haven't been in zero gravity, but I imagine this is not the place to have a garden salad where the different little vegetables are floating around in space. That would be hard to eat. NASA Food Systems Manager Vicki Cloeris and her team are taking space food to new frontiers, trying to develop food that will power future astronauts all the way to Mars. Chicken with peanut sauce? Oh, that looks good. <laughs> For your mental well-being. It's really a, a psychological benefit to have good food. You know, it's comfort food. Having some good macaroni and cheese as a snack can make you feel better. Mmm, that's tasty. Mike Massimino has flown two shuttle missions to repair the Hubble telescope. He ate about 71 meals in zero gravity. Kind of got to go slow. So you can't be trying to whiff a lot of food down your mouth or else it'll be a disaster. In space, no one can hear you spill a hot coffee. Thank you. It's mission critical that no food escapes in the rehydration process. So NASA uses a high-tech system that safely injects water into a pouch of dry food. Without it, water could escape into the cabin and wreak havoc. From packaging to nutrition to taste, the chefs at NASA are coming up with innovative ways to take space food to new interplanetary heights. Number 63 helped stymie the expansion of the Ottoman Empire. The soft pretzel. During the siege of Vienna in 1510, the Turkish army attempted an invasion by tunneling under the city walls. But Vienna's pretzel bakers were already in their kitchens baking and detected the underground sneak attack. They awoke the rest of the city, putting a knot in the Turks' plan to take Vienna. Number 62 is a fast food that made us faster. The Waffle. 1972, in a quest to create a lighter running shoe, University of Oregon track coach Bill Bowerman poured liquid urethane over his wife's waffle iron and changed the world forever. When Bowerman peeled away the hardened rubber, the result was a prototype for the waffle pattern shoe sole. Today, almost every sneaker on the planet uses it to make lighter, faster shoes. Fast food number 61 is changing the world in more ways every day. The sunflower seed. Not only do they reduce cholesterol and improve heart health, but they are also being tapped as the alternative fuel of the future. Researchers in the UK have found a way to extract hydrogen from sunflower oil, changing the way automobiles may be powered in the future. Coming in at number 60 is the fast food of the 1%. Caviar. When the Monopoly man is traveling, you know, he has caviar with him all the time. Uh, most of us are probably going to stick with PB&J. There's nothing more delicious that you can eat more quickly than caviar. Of course, you have to be really, really, really rich. But it wasn't always that way. In the 19th century, the east coast of the United States was the world's largest producer of caviar. It was even served up like peanuts for free in bars. That is, until overfishing made it a rare commodity. So you have this beginning of what starts off, at least in America, as a poor man's food moving on to you know, haute cuisine today. The Caviar Kings at Petrosian, New York, keep their supply under lock and key at a secret location. We are in the caviar safe. Basically, uh, we need uh, very cold temperature and dry environments. But after that, I cannot tell you more. You'd be tight-lipped, too, with this much consumable capital on hand. With an average cost of about $100 per ounce, Petrosian moves over $30 million of fish eggs each year. The rarest caviar of them all sells for over $10,000 a pound. That's about $10 per tiny fish egg, making it the most expensive luxury food item on the planet. Once a boozy treat for adults, this frothy American classic comes in at number 59. The Milkshake. In the United States, during the time of Prohibition, a lot of bars were turned into ice cream parlors. A place where you could sit and get a wholesome milk-based beverage. Whiskey and eggs were replaced with malted milk and syrup, and American diner culture was born. Diners became the epicenter of teen social life. And the milkshake was there to launch a generation of romances. Number 58 isn't just a fast food, it's also a legal defense. The Twinkie. 
At the 1979 trial of Dan White for the murder of San Francisco Mayor George Moscone and Councilman Harvey Milk, the defense team pointed to White's consumption of snack foods like the Twinkie as a telltale sign of depression. He avoided a charge of murder in the first degree, and a new term entered the American legal lexicon, the Twinkie defense, a term still used for any preposterous legal strategy aimed at lessening a criminal charge. Don't touch that dial. Coming in at number 57 is the Salisbury Steak TV Dinner. Developed in 1953 by the Swanson Brothers, the TV dinner changed the family dynamic forever. Ready in 25 minutes, the TV dinner helped millions of women put down the apron and jump into the workforce. In their first year, Swanson dished out 10 million TV dinners, making it the first frozen dinner to hit the Main Street. Food number 56 is the treat that sent the dessert world shimmying and shaking. Jello. With the invention of Jello, any American housewife could just pick up a little box of Jello and create this wonderful, wobbling, multi huge dessert in no time flat. But this beloved American dish also helped the Soviets get the atomic bomb after World War II. It was a great shock when in 1949 the Soviets, years earlier than they were expected to, exploded their own atomic bomb. And suddenly it looked like the United States and potentially the entire free world could maybe be at the mercy of the Soviets. So how did the Soviets figure out how to make the bomb so quickly? A spy ring led by Julius and Ethel Rosenberg had been smuggling nuclear secrets to the Soviets for years. For one famous meeting, the spies were each instructed to carry a piece of a jello box as proof of identity. It's June 1945. One morning, there's a knock on the door. David Greenglass opens the door, and it's Harry Gold. They invite him in. Greenglass says, can I see some identification? Gold pulls out the jello box, and it's pretty immediately clear that this is the man sent from Soviet intelligence. Four years later, the Soviets exploded their first atomic bomb, and the arms race was on. 